Hi, I'm the Warrior Witch and you can call me Nike. Today we're going without glasses because I think I look awful cute with my makeup and I've gotten told recently that I have dragon eyes, so here they are, unfiltered without the glasses because they kind of hide all that. But anyway, today we're talking about broom closet witchcraft or just ways to keep your practice a little bit more low-key. So I want to start the video by giving sort of a disclaimer. It, it's more of like my base thoughts before really getting into the topic, which is if you are in a household where it would be dangerous to practice, especially in places it's more common in like evangelical or very fundamentalist homes, uh, anything highly religious, if you may face homelessness or physical danger for telling people about your practice, I'm gonna say something you won't like, which is don't practice. Like at all. Like at all at all. Like, I cannot stress nothing, nothing, nothing. There's there's this sort of feeling that people get where you feel like you have to do it right now, even if it'll put you in danger, because witchcraft has to happen right now, because you see everybody online doing it, and it feels like it's this trend that will disappear, but we don't have the context of it being normal in society to feel like it'll stick around, but believe me, it's not going anywhere. So if you wanna practice, Wait until you're somewhere safe or wait until you're at least somewhere where you have a little bit more privacy yourself. If you are at any legitimate risk of homelessness or physical danger or anything like that, don't practice until you are out of that situation. For the rest of you, now keep in mind, being in the broom closet doesn't just have to be because you would be in some sort of danger. It could just be that you don't really want people to know because it's more private. Like that's how I felt when I was first in the broom closet and first really getting into my practice. Religion and my personal practices were always very private. It's just not something that I ever felt like other people needed to know. And it's not something I really wanted to talk about yet. So I kept it more low key with some of these strategies just because I didn't want to talk about it. So just remember, you you don't have to feel like you're in danger in order to want to keep it more private. If, if you are perfectly safe, but don't want to make it a super public thing, you don't have to. So first off for low key stuff, a lot of the focus is going to be on the basics but you know, everybody should be doing the basics anyway. That longer term focus on the basics will really help strengthen the rest of your practice later on. And you know, this is especially with like meditation, uh, getting to know yourself more on the inner level, especially within your mind, getting to know yourself that way helps you to understand more of what you want later on and where you might want to focus. And you know, focusing on research for a long time also goes along with that where you can study all of these things and figure out what most interests you so you can learn everything you possibly can and then sort of pick a direction to go for your more private practices. When it comes to writing down your information, keeping it more low key, I've talked about before in my digital witchcraft video that there are great methods for keeping a book of shadows or grimoire or whatever you want to call it online for keeping your notes online. You can get a lot of digital resources like digital books that you can get for like the Kindle or Unscribed or Scribd. I don't know how it's pronounced still. Who knows? But digital book resources that maybe you could carry around on your phone even. Or if you have the downloaded PDF, you could put that on Google Drive, which is where I have a lot of my resources. Plus the nice thing about this is that whenever you want to have a physical grimoire in the future, you can just translate it from digital to physical. Now if you wanna keep a physical book of shadows and you wanna keep it super low key, it's pretty normal for people to keep a bunch of pretty notebooks. So it, it doesn't have to be a school notebook, but a school notebook would be the most low key option. But you know, like, Barnes and Noble sells cool journals. Even like Walmart and Target have pretty nice ones, just regular lined or even blank ones. You can get a lot of nice stuff and it's not all that unusual to just say, oh, I thought it was cool. You know, if I wanna like take notes or whatever, there's a lot of excuses you can give for mundane reasons to have it, but just fancy journals in the first place aren't always all that abnormal. So for the most part, you're probably even safe to keep a physical one. There are also just regular items you can have that society's not gonna think much of if they happen to see it, if, if somebody you know happens to see it, like a classmate or a teacher or a friend or whatever. Plenty of normal items or items that are considered normal can be used in witchcraft. And even like areas of study can be more normal, especially with uh, herbal medicine coming more into popularity. Those kinds of topics, mythology, you can study a lot of things quite openly and even have books on your shelf about those topics without it necessarily being seen as weird, especially when it comes to mythology and culture, like with Greek and Norse culture, things like that, those are super common and are part of the public consciousness. So 
learning about those and talking about those, not gonna be all that weird. I talked about it in my charms video about jewelry being a great way that you can charm things and wear them and have a witchy thing with yourself without it having to be weird. Lucky charms, things like that. You can easily have things that you can carry on you, small versions of spell work, especially if they look very aesthetic, you can get away with carrying around a lot and having a lot like set up in your house without it being weird. Even things like crystals and essential oils are pretty normal now. Anything that might not be as low key, especially like tarot cards and things like that, or specifically books on witchcraft and, and practices like that, you wanna make sure that they are in a way that makes sense with other low key items or can easily be hidden behind other things. Where's my travel altar? There it is, hold on. Let's talk travel altars. So I actually have two. I've shown one before in one of my older videos from right in the beginning of my channel. I now have a different one. Um, I have a, a small like box box, maybe like a tackle box size thing, but I started with a very small travel altar like this and there's not much inside of it now compared to like, you know, my bigger altars, but you know, you can stuff a lot inside of things like Altoids tins and things like that, and you can have supplies on the go. If you don't have the ability to have an open altar, a travel altar can be a great idea. I've talked about other kinds of altars in my altar video, but travel altars like this are good if you just want to have it on the go and you want to keep it the most hidden possible. You can be a little bit bigger like I have with my tackle box, but if somebody finds that box, it's gonna be a little bit more obvious that it's something that is out of the norm, especially because my box doesn't look like just a regular shoe box, but you can do things like a shoe box or a cardboard box that you get from like Walmart or wherever, and you can put your things in there. Just make sure that nobody's gonna think it's a bunch of junk if they happen to see it and throw it out. Like find a way just in case it gets opened up to have it look like stuff you would intentionally want to keep. Now there's also ways to do spell work without it being super weird. I would say the easiest way, aside from small bottles that would be charm size or things that are actually just charms and being very small versions of spell work, candle magic is gonna be maybe the easiest thing to pass off because scented candles are also part of the regular public consciousness. You can easily just say, I really like candles, especially if you match up the color and the herbal scent that is put into it with your intention. If both of those things are able to line up, even better. All the less work that you have to do with figuring out how to get those intentions and get those herbs in yourself. If you have a lavender scented candle and it's a nice lavender color and you have the intention to have it for peace or for peaceful dreams, those kinds of things or just for meditation, it right away fits in with those things. So you don't have to worry about how do I put lavender into this candle I got from the store. It's right there. The other easy way to do low-key witchcraft is usually through kitchen magic. So cooking or like drawing sigils with the oil or with the butter or whatever. And everybody needs to cook, everybody needs to eat. So cooking something with a special blend of herbs like thyme and oregano, if they suit your intention, you can easily do that. And it's super low-key because you're just cooking with herbs. You can put your intention into it basically silently. You don't need to say it out loud or do anything that's super showy to, to make it seem like you're doing something weird. You just do what you gotta do, you cook the food, and then you eat it, and now you've got that intention. You've got that, that kind of magic done. You can go on walks out in nature. That's super important, especially now during, you know, the whole global pandemic situation. Getting out into nature, especially alone, you know, now you can give the excuse of social distancing. You can say, I don't want to be near any other people. I want to make sure everybody's safe. And I just want to get out into the sunlight, into the fresh air. And I, I want to just be in nature because I'm cooped up inside all day. You know, it's, it's a great excuse. You can use that to your advantage and just say you want to be alone. Another great thing to get into would be sigils especially if you are already naturally artistic and people know that about you, it can just be put off as doodles. You're just having a little fun. I don't know, just a random design, especially if you're making a bunch of them or if you repeat it over and over again. You know, it's just doodles. It's just for fun. Especially the more pictographic they are, the easier it is to pass off as doodles. And sigils can be used on anything. They're super low key. I'll eventually make a video about sigils at some point in the future, just because I think they're so important and so versatile, but that'll be a later day. Sigils can go like on a piece of paper that you just carry with you. You could sew it into the inside of your mask. You could put it in the inside of a scarf or a hat. You could draw it on your hand or on your arm or something, or even somewhere more inconspicuous, like underneath your sleeve. Sigils can go kind of anywhere. You could draw them in oil if you're doing kitchen magic. You can put them on the bottoms of candles. You can even do it in just water on stuff if it is something that would be safe to put water on. 
because the water is invisible and it'll evaporate into the air so nobody will ever know it was there but you know you put it there and you could even do it with stuff like specially charged moon water with different phases or different zodiac signs of the moon so it's a great way to incorporate some of those other smaller basics together and get a little creative with it there's there's definitely ways you can put some of these ideas all into one to do a lot of interesting things while keeping all of it low-key at the same time there are also items that start to bridge that gap a little bit where it starts to get a little bit more in that in-between zone where people might start to question it so just keep in mind that I would only recommend some of this as super public and open things if you are willing for some people to maybe have suspicions or maybe willing for people to figure it out, but you can still do them if the people might not think much of it. So things like incense or maybe like astrology. Astrology sort of toes that line of like, it's not necessarily witchcraft itself and it's not considered to be that anymore, but it's also not like a quote unquote normal people thing. But you could get away with astrological stuff, you could get away with maybe like sun and moon decorations. Even strangely, some forms of divination are starting to be more normal, especially like tarot cards. More and more things in practices are starting to enter the public consciousness, so it's not that weird to be really into crystals, to be into astrology, to maybe even have tarot cards without necessarily saying, I am a witch, you know? And part of the cool thing about witchcraft is that while the history of needing to hide your craft and couching it within the dominant religion of, of the time, especially like with Christianity, while that has a darker history and reasoning to it because of the actual physical and like life danger it posed to people, you can use those tactics to hide some of your craft in, especially with Christianity, you can hide it in Christianity, prayers in the Bible, and there are lots of candles for saints. At the dollar store near me, we have these glass candles, which I use for a lot of my workings. They they have regular candles like this that are just a plain color, but they also have like St. Jude. So you could get like a candle for St. Jude or whatever, or, you know, it, especially if you're Catholic, that's gonna be the easiest way. But especially just going back to like prayers in the Bible and reading those things, praying to the angels, because the angels do have associations with other like deities and spirits and entities. You, you can sort of hide what you're doing underneath the visual layer of it being something else while it really is this other concept. These methods are also great for introducing it to people slowly and seeing how they feel about it without being in as much danger. You can talk to people about meditation, you can talk to them about crystals and essential oils, you can start talking to them about herbs. If you feel very comfortable, you could talk about tarot and divination and things like that because that's usually that line of like, how do you feel about this? I heard about this concept. And then you can sort of see where their mind is at with those things. You could bring up astrology because that's a little bit more normal. So you can, you can bring up these topics as things that you have studied and now know about without necessarily saying you are one thing or the other. And that can be a great way to test the waters to see if you say, if you want to tell people about this path and about this part of your life, this can be a great way to introduce that to them without it putting you in any danger. Cause you know, I'm all about safety because it's really important. So yeah, I hope that helps you guys. I hope that generates some ideas. Um, I, I think it's an important topic because, you know, I, I view it as such a personal thing and it is such a personal thing. It's a big part of a lot of people's lives. So if you want to be able to do it in a way that is private and special just for you, do it. And maybe these ideas will help you. I hope they help you. I hope they help somebody. I would think so. Yeah. All right, that's all I've got for you guys this week. So if you want to connect with me, show off your witchy journey on Instagram, you can use the hashtag Warrior Witch Coven, and I'll be checking that out regularly as much as I can. And if you want to follow me, these are my ads on all of my social media links, and I'll see you guys next time. So, blessed be.